Hello, my name's Andy. Welcome to episode 33 of Keeping Water. Before I talk about what's coming up in this week's episode, I'd just like to welcome the new subscribers. There's been my biggest increase in new subs over the last 10 days or so, and I'm really grateful and hope you'll all stick around. I'd also like to thank all my existing subscribers for their continued support. If you've not subscribed, I'd be delighted if you like my existing content enough to take the plunge. Like many YouTubers say, it's totally free. The move and bed build may be coming to a finish, but I've more projects to complete over the coming months, so there'll be lots more to see. In this week's episode, there's stage three of the move and bed build, where I add media, sort of regret it and resolve some teething problems. I also fix leaks by barely doing anything and look at increasing the flow rate in the pond. I'll also show my usual late winter, early spring blanket weed growth and what I'm doing about it. Right, let's get started. The plans for stage three of the move and bed build were to add the media, fix the small leaks and see how much I could increase the flow through the filter now that I had larger outlet pipe work. I wanted a media specifically for moving beds. So this would include K1 Micro, K Plus, Helex and Eco Pond Chip. Now the first three are very similar in design, the Pond Chips being a very different take on a high surface area media. To decide which one to use, I read up as much as I could, which is where the pond chips dropped out of the running, as I couldn't find as much independent info as for the other three. On the info I had, they did seem promising, and maybe something I consider in the future. As to the remaining three, Helex and K1 Micro had less surface area than K Plus and were a similar price. However, K Plus both had the larger advertised surface area for bacteria to colonize and was slightly cheaper. This fairly pragmatic criteria led me to choosing it for my moving bed. There was one slight worry however. Two well thought of YouTubers had had problems with finding large amounts of swarf in their bags of K+, and this not being something you'd like to end up in your pond. However, forewarned is forearmed, so I went ahead and bought some. I would, however, spend some time, about an hour I thought, sifting through the media for swarf before adding it to the filter. This ended up taking a little longer than an hour though, as you can see. It was quite annoying to remove it as it stuck fast not only to the media, but also to my hands, sleeves and anything other than what I wanted to remove it to. So, after two hours plus, I'd finished and was really happy to and could begin adding the K plus to the moving bed. I ummed and ahed about how to, but decided to dump pretty much all of it in at once. I'm nothing if not a subtle and considered pond keeper. Now, there was one potential problem I'd been ignoring since I made the filter. Preventing the media from exiting the moving bed, I had some mesh covering the outlet pipe, which works fine. The problem though is that the media will obviously be pulled towards it and the comparatively small surface area of the outlet means the water will have a high speed per square inch. Therefore this speed of the water flowing through the mesh and the outlet could hold increasing amounts of media against it, potentially restricting the flow of the water through the system. Which it did. And then the moving bed started to overflow. Well, the water level began rising but as I was partially aware of the risk, I was in the shed and spotted it happening before it actually overflowed. So, how to resolve it? Some, 
use a long cylinder with slots in to increase the area of the outlet, slow down the speed of flow through the outlet and reduce the blockage. Now, this can take some tinkering to get right. And although I like tinkering, I'm also quite impatient. So instead, I thought what was the best way of increasing the surface area of any barrier between the media and the outlet? The answer to which was, obviously, a grid across the whole width and height of the moving bed. Well, that was the answer I came to. Therefore, I made a barrier out of the last of my media grid offcuts, connected it together with cable ties and covered it again with some of the fine mesh I had left. I made it slightly too large, which helps with its friction fit. Also, the pressure from water and media helps keep it in place. And it works. Obviously, it could be considered a hammer to crack a nut type of solution, and I do lose some space for media in the bed, but I'm happy with it for now. I may make an improved version and or fix it more securely in place, but for now, I'll say it's a prototype and leave it be. Next, it was time to add media. This time, I decided to add some slowly over time. I also added some temporary aeration to start to get it moving. I'm not sure what I'm going to use long term. I'll see how the single disc works once the media matures and take it from there. Next, it was time to address the leaks. The first was at the slide valve where the water enters from the pond. If you've watched the previous episode, it had a small drip that I was mopping up with a towel while I waited for parts. This connection has always been a little temperamental, so I plan to replace the valve and glue in some more connections. All I then needed to do was replace that section. However, once I checked it in the shed and removed the delightful towel, it didn't appear to be leaking anymore. I therefore replaced the towel with some paper towel just in case and then moved on to the second leak. The second leak was an even slower drip where the rigid pipe work from the moving bed joined the flexible pressure pipe. It was pretty slow and like the first one had stopped when I checked it. I'd also bought a new part for this one but again I'm leaving it for now. Finally, in stage 3 of the moving bed build, I looked at increasing the flow through the filter. For background, if you've not seen previous episodes, my filter is pump fed through one and a half inch pipe and returns the water also through one and a half inch pipe. As you may know, water won't exit via gravity as fast as it enters via a pump. So to balance it, you need to have a larger diameter pipework outlet than you do as an inlet. As my pump is not variable, I placed an old splitter after the pump in the pond so that I could adjust how much water was pumped to the filter. This worked, although does have negatives, especially in terms of there being more plastic in the pond for the fish to potentially injure themselves on. In stage two, I replaced the one and a half inch outlet pipework with two inch. After giving the moving bed a week or more fatiguing problems, I then increased the flow to the filter. To do this, I used this handy tool I've made that prevents me having to get into the pond even more than I do already. It fits neatly over the tap on the splitter and allows some reasonably accurate adjustment. I then took some photos of the water level in the filter and then, 12 hours later, some after photos. No apparent change, so no problems with the increase. I have some thinking to do, however, about whether I want to increase further. The issues are dwell time in both the moving bed and UV. E.g. moving water too quick through either isn't always better. I also need to consider noise, as the water is quite a bit louder coming out of the outlet. And finally, I have some vague plans to change the outlet, and I'd like to be certain about that before changing flow rates too permanently. So, that's the end of stage 3 of the moving bed build. I'm pretty happy. There's been some teething issues, but when is there ever not? And nothing impossible to solve. I'll update in a few weeks in stage 4. Once I've decided on aeration, put in as much media as possible, and also made a decision about flow rates.
Like many pond keepers, I think, I tend to experience more problems with blanket weed at this time of year than further into the spring or summer. I think the increase in sunlight and fish activity, as well as the filters not being back to full capacity after the winter, means there's some pretty good conditions for blanket weed to flourish. It's not particularly bad at the moment, more just unsightly, but I'd like to treat fairly quickly as it always only gets worse. However, this time I've left it a couple of weeks longer due to the work on the filters. I use Nishikoi Clearwater's blanket weed treatment. I've not really done any testing on different types to say if it's the best, but I can say why I use it. Firstly, it's always worked for me. Secondly, none of my fish or plants have been affected by it. Thirdly, you can use it in low temperatures, which is generally when I need it. And lastly, I found, by accident, that I can use a lower than suggested dose, around 60-70%, to 70%, to still get an effective result, which I never think is a bad thing, especially in terms of cost. Anyway, I'm due to retreat in about two weeks, after which I'll review how well it's worked this year and feedback to you. Thank you so much for watching this episode of Keeping Water. I really do appreciate it. In next week's episode, I'll be changing the bulb in my UV. Doesn't sound too exciting, I know, but I'm rather prone to messing it up. Also, if deliveries allow, I may be starting my next project and showing its progress. We'll see. Thanks again for watching, and I'll see you next time.